Good morning, NBC Los Angeles. It's Heather Brooker, and I am coming to you from a very safe social distance uh, inside my home. And there is something very important I want to take the time to talk with you all about. I have a very special guest on today, and I'm going to bring him on right now. Um, You guys... Just bear with us as well. This is some new technology we're using. We're all kind of learning as we go, but I want to make sure. Hello. I think we can see you now. Um, Everyone, if you're just joining us, hello and welcome. I am Heather Brooker. I have uh, John Passantini on today. Hello. How are you? Hi. Great, Heather. Thanks for inviting me. Sure. So uh, I just want to tell everybody really quickly who you are and what you do. Dr. Passantini is a board certified clinical child and adolescent psychologist and professor of psychiatry psychiatry, excuse me, at the UCLA Semmel Institute. And he also directs the UCLA Center for Child Anxiety, Resilience, Education and Support, which focuses on the community and school based prevention of youth anxiety. So thank you again. I appreciate you taking the time to do this, uh, even uh, being patient through some of our technical <laughs> technical things. Um, so I want to just, first of all, let's start off telling everybody again, what this is about is we're just taking a minute um, to process everything that's been coming at us in the news over the past couple of weeks. I know there's a lot of people in my um, friendship circle and my coworkers and my family who are feeling a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress right now. And I really just want to take a minute to um, talk about it and let's get it out there. Let's talk about maybe where these fears are coming from and what are some ways we can manage those. So first of all, let's start with you um, uh, and let's talk about how your practice and, and your patients. Has anything changed? Um, is anything different in the way that you treat your patients right now? Uh, yeah, quite a few things. So um, I also direct the uh, child OCD um, clinic at UCLA, where we work with a lot of kids um, that have contamination fears. And part of the, the treatment for that is we do behavioral exposure along with other kinds of treatments. Um, because, you know, in OCD, the fears tend to be exaggerated or, or go beyond what the norm would be. But now in the uh, era of COVID-19, the contamination concerns are actually real. And we do need to be much more careful than we usually do. So, um, you know, our, our patients are much more anxious at this point and worried about this. We work with a lot of anxious patients, you know, just with general anxiety um, who, are, who are in the same boat. So we are moving very rapidly at UCLA towards telehealth, where we're doing everything remotely. Um, we're doing some through Zoom, um, which is one platform, um, and others to our hospital has, a, has an internal system. And I think that's what we're seeing all over the country is the transition where possible of uh, behavioral health, mental, mental and behavioral health towards remote um towards remote practice, the same as people are having to do via work at home. Um, I know for myself, I'm a very extroverted person. I love being around people. I love interacting and talking with people. And for me, having to do a lot of self-distancing, staying away from um, work and, and things like that, it's it's going to be a challenge, that's for sure. So I know it's not just the people who already have anxiety and fear um, as well. It's people who are generally very outgoing that um, I think are going to be a little overwhelmed by, they're now saying weeks, possibly even months of self-distancing. Um, what are some of the fears that you have seen or some of the um, things that keep coming up in your research and in talking to your patients that people are experiencing right now? Well, one of the big things to think about is, um, and for people with anxiety um, or, or stress or, or trauma histories, this is certainly exaggerated. Um, but one of the things that makes us most worried or anxious is uncertainty. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially so, again, in people that have, have difficulty with anxiety. So right now we're living in a, in a time of extreme uncertainty and everything is changing. We've lost all of our, our typical, you know, um, um, calming touchstones of being able to go to work and be with people. And it, it's just it, the whole world is turned upside down, which can be very difficult. Um, so it's, you know, some of the things that we need to really focus on um, are really maintaining structure. When we're working from home, um, a lot of my colleagues have kids, and now they they are, they are um, homeschooling their kids mm-hmm. or monitoring their online schooling. And especially for kids, it's just critical to maintain structure. Try to maintain a sense of normalcy um, in this in this new environment. Um, the, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, the other thing that's really 
important is that we also need to to remain as healthy as we as we can. I mean that obviously we need to follow the guidelines for minimizing risk with hand washing and all of that, but it's it's also really important to um, to manage um, ourselves our anxiety, this uncertainty is to, as part of the structure is to maintain health in terms of, of sleeping, mm -hmm. of eating, staying on schedules for sleeping and for eating, for exercise, for trying to remain active. Um, there's a tendency towards going towards um, alcohol or, or drugs, um, legal or, 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 or not, to try to maintain our anxiety as well. And so it's really important to try to, 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 ver to limit or avoid when possible these kinds of distractions. Um, that's true. I've had, I've seen a lot of people posting online that they stocked up on TP and liquor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they were hitting up the wine and the beer aisles pretty hard. Um, and there are different types of coping mechanisms and things that people do. Now, I'm, now uh, Dr. Passantini, I know you can't tell, but there's a lot of comments coming in, people saying that they are anxious and that they are stressed. Um, some people are saying they're bored. Um, some people say that they're uh, turning to God and to meditation and prayer and that sort of thing um, to get through all of this. And I want to talk a little bit more about those coping mechanisms. I know um, routine is so important um, and it's hard when you're, you know, you, you kind of feel like you can't really go anywhere. Um, and it starts to feel like, how do you make a routine when your routine involved getting up having breakfast, going out somewhere. Um, what kinds of things can we do in our own homes to create a, that sort of comforting routine? Or are there anything that's um, grounding, like a grounding presence that we can do in our own homes? Yeah, that's a really good question. I'm glad to hear that people are turning to things that they feel are important mm -hmm. to them, um, whether it's religion or meditation or, or others. Um, use whatever tools that you have or whatever is important to you. And I think one of the from, from a broad, very broad perspective, I think um, it's easy to lose sight of the things that are important to us, um, the things that give our lives meaning. Um, that gets lost in the chaos or in the shuffle. And I think that's really important. So for people, you know, hold on to the things that are important, to family, to religion, mm -hmm. to work, um, to whatever it might be, to charity, whatever it is that, that you do that makes you feel good. Maintain that in any way that you can. Now, it may be different um, in this current environment because you're not able to go to work or, or to volunteer or to be with family, but you certainly can virtually. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the important things that, that we're learning um, about this is to maintain, you know, virtual contact with with people. You know, if you're working from home and you're bored, um, you know, co-work with a friend, set up your iPads or your laptop so you can see each other and chat while you're working. Virtual meals, um, even, um, where you can share, you know, watch each other cook or things like, like that but what are going to be important. All, like it's like human contact, though, is so important and so essential um, and some people are going to start, you know, going down a rabbit hole if you don't have that, that interaction and that human contact every day. Um, and that's what I worry about. I worry about the public in general, everybody, um, sort of overall feeling like a general sense of fear and loss. Um, I had, I was at the grocery store about two weeks ago and when it's all really started to take off and, um, there was just this feeling inside the grocery store of panic and there was still toilet paper at that time in my store. So the toilet paper, um, stockpiling hadn't quite happened yet, but there was definitely a sense of anxiousness. Like you could feel it, um, bubbling under the surface and people were putting a few extra things in their cart than they normally would. And it's hard not to let something like that affect you. Um, I would love to address something you mentioned earlier and I see everybody, I want you to know, I see your comments coming in. A lot of people talk talking about anxiety regarding their jobs, um, not knowing if they're going to have work and be able to pay rent. Um, these are very real feel fears and very real concerns. A lot of people saying they get anxious because of the media, watching the news stories, seeing things online. Um, any recommendations that people could, could do with that anxiety? Should they just turn it off and tune out? Um, what's, is there anything they can do? Yeah, well, I think we need to stay informed. Yeah. So I think everybody needs to, to check in with the news, you know, at a certain certain times or certain points. And, you know, whether that might be, you know, at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. Or, or 10 a.m., you know, at, at the top of the news and, and get the information. Um, we need to stay connected with this. But we don't want to sit in front of the TV 24-7. 
and do nothing but listen to this over and over again because that that can really it can really be detrimental and it, and it can really cause a lot of fears and panic and mm-hmm. be careful, you know, stay informed, but really we need to focus on the facts. And there's a lot of misinformation out there that uh, that can be really terrifying, but I think it, it, it's really important to, to stay informed, but don't let it consume, consume your life. And somebody just had a really great comment about planning something for the future. Renee had a great comment here. It says planning something for the future as a way to sort of combat that fear that the future is uncertain, even if mm-hmm. that thing or that event or something you have planned in the future maybe doesn't happen or gets pushed back, it's still nice to have something to hold on to so the future doesn't feel so far away. So that's a great comment. Um, I want to talk a little bit about parents who are now home, um, finding themselves in the role of teacher, of full-time caregiver, and also a lot of them are also probably still trying to work from home. Like I am, my daughter is in the other room right now, um, with Nintendo as her babysitter. Um, and I am, I am stressed trying to figure out what I'm going to do next week. Cause she's technically on spring break right now. Um, I'm stressed trying to figure out what I'm going to do next week when I have to work, but also, um, start teaching her and start homeschooling her. That is, um, not one of my gifts. I'm, I'm God bless our teachers, but I'm very worried about that. I'm very worried about that. And I know a lot of other parents, parents are in the same boat. Um, so tell me, um, how are parents able to, um, what, what can we, what advice can we give parents to manage this and not, um, spread that fear or anxiety to our children? Uh, that's a, that's a really great question. And a lot of my colleagues are in the same boat. Um, I think, I think every zoom call I've been on, I've been on a ton this week. There's at least one child in the background. <laughs> um, I have, I, I have my separation anxious dog under the, under the table right now, who's very happy I'm home. Um, and he's, he's being good, fortunately. Um, but we need to, you know, kid, it, this is hard for kids because they don't really understand this. They don't have a context or prior experience. Um, or even even the, the the mental maturation to really understand what's going on. So this can really be overwhelming to them, especially if they're watching TV, mm-hmm. you know, the news all the time. Um, kids look to parents to see if things are okay, and if we are if we are freaking out, the kids are going to freak out. Mm-hmm. So um, there's a few things that, that parents. I think it's important for parents to know related to keeping their kids relatively calm and also managing managing their time at home. Mm-hmm. Um, and any conversations um, about about COVID, about what's going on, that needs to be tailored to the to the age and maturation of of the child. With an anxious child, you may say a little less. With an older child, you may say a little bit more. But we want to limit or monitor news exposure. Um, again, kids need to know the facts. We want to model calmness the best that we can when we're with our kids. It's okay to acknowledge that we don't know what's happening on, that we're nervous or anxious because our kids are feeling this way and and we want to be genuine with our kids. But we also want to model um, uh, the, the, the likelihood of a positive future, you know, that this is something that is happening. Stuff like this has happened in the world before, before we were born. Mm-hmm. Um, but there will, but things will get better, and then we will do some fun things. I love the idea of scheduling stuff in the future. That's really important. Um, we want to, so we want to avoid catastrophizing. We want to maintain normalcy. Um, kids need to have a schedule. Um, we want to make things fun for them. You can make chores into games. You can make schoolwork into games. We have flexibility with the kids at home now that we can do things in our own way and personalize them for them. But it's really important to um, acknowledge kids' feelings, stick to the facts. Um, There's a lot of relaxation strategies that we use with kids that would be helpful for parents too. And and I I think some of your listeners may want to hear hear about those at at some point, and I'm happy to do that. Yeah, lay it on us. We're ready. The people are are definitely um, commenting and, and engaged and curious about this. So yeah, what are what are some relaxation techniques that us parents can do um, when we're home with our kids or anybody can do when they're starting to feel a little overwhelmed? Yeah, well, I think, I think, I think the first thing is to try to just maintain some perspective. Think to the future, reach out mm-hmm. to colleagues, to family, to friends for support. So, you know, one of the things that's most frightening is, especially for people that might be alone, is this lack of isolation. So the one way we can combat that is with is with virtual virtual social contacts. Or if you are at home with somebody, um, you know, with appropriate you know precautions, certainly you know talking and sharing and engaging in joint activities. I also want to say um, really quickly, I love what you said about that. This 
type of thing is something similar has happened in the past and we survived as a human people and as a human race. I think about that a lot too. I'm like, when I start to feel overwhelmed when I was pregnant, for example, I was worried about giving birth. And I remember, oh my gosh, millions and millions of women throughout history and time have done this. I'm going to make it. It's going to be okay. So I think that's an important reminder to remember too, that we have gone through this before. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah. That's great. Sure. That's a really, that's an important point. Um, you know, so stay in contact, look for social support. Um, there are um, there are a number of relaxation strategies that we use, and there's tons of information online. Excuse me. Um, there's tons of information online. Um, ADAA.org, Anxiety and Depression Association of America, our center, CARE Center, one word, um, at ucla.edu, um, um, has a lot of tips. You can find this stuff online, but... Um, Meditation and mindfulness exercises can be really helpful for just for just calming and clearing uh, your mind. Um, the simplest thing, and what we we tell our parents and our children, um, our patients and, and their parents, simple breathing exercises. Mm -hmm. Sit down, close your eyes, and just just diaphragmatically breathe. So in in slowly for four four seconds, about four beats. And then breathe out, um, exhale for about five beats. And do that three or four or five times. It's, it's like a reset. It can be very helpful. Um, take, you know, do something that you like to do. Take a warm bath. Um, you know, read a book. Go find your favorite movie, you know, your most comfortable movie. Um, do yoga. Um, there are grounding exercises that are really helpful as well. One of the things we, we use is the five senses grounding technique, if you're really feeling starting to get out of control, is it's called soothing with your senses. And so name five things you can see around you right now. Name four things you can touch around you right now. Name three things you can hear around you right now. Name two things you can taste around you right now. And name one thing you can smell around you right now. So by doing something like this, it's focusing your attention on concrete things, the here and now, the comfortable things around you. It grounds you. And, and it can ground you and it can give you a sense of just that you of a place and, and a belonging. And little things like this are, are very helpful. If your stress or anxiety becomes difficult to control. If you really feel like you like you may not be able to handle it, or if you are, stay at high levels of, of stress or anxiety for longer than a couple of days, um, you you might want to think about reaching out. Um, and there are a number of virtual support groups. Again, adaa.org and other organizations. Um, most of the major, you know. Um, psychological and psychiatric and, 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 you know, mental health organizations are providing uh, support groups virtually. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of resources out there that can be really helpful. I love that. And I also want to point out to um, Alma says that she and her husband sat down and talked about the situation. They planned what they would do if they got sick. Um, they also looked into their money and their savings plan. So they sat down and sort of made a plan of action uh, if they do get sick, um, what would happen? And I know sometimes that can be a very calming thing to do for people who are feeling like the world is chaotic and, and, um, sort of spinning out of control. I know it's, it definitely is for me making lists, um, still updating my calendar, um, still going for walks with my daughter. We went out yesterday and, um, she's been practicing trying to ride her bike and we're still working on that. Um, but it's definitely one, one good positive thing I want to say and side effect of all of this has been that I am definitely more present now that I'm home and I am not taking any second for granted with my family and with my daughter. Like I said, it's I've seen so many more of my neighbors outside going for walks. Um, you know, we wave at each other from a distance, um, but it's definitely getting people outside and I think getting people more face-to-face -face time. If anything positive is to come out of this whole mess at all, I would say that, you know, we're all finding ways to stay connected with each other and within our close family units. So 
I appreciate you taking the time so much uh, to talk with me and help me get through all of our technical issues, but I'm so glad this worked out because I think your advice um, and your uh, tips were very valuable. Thank you all so much for listening. If you want to keep commenting after this video, um, I will see them and I'll make sure Dr. John sees them as well. Um, remember everybody take deep breaths. We're going to get through this. Um, there is a link there in this post. If you want to stay up to date on everything happening with the coronavirus pandemic, we have all the resources you need there from the latest on facts and numbers and information, as well as entertainment and things that you can do at home. I did the story about a Netflix watch party and how you can set up a watch party with your friends for Disney plus and Hulu and Netflix. So go and check that out. And, uh, Dr. John, thank you again for your time. I really appreciate it. That was really a wonderful experience. Thank you. Thank you again for watching. Everybody be safe out there and we will try to um, do this again very soon.